Hello friends, welcome to the video. In this video, we are going to discuss about what is magnetic resonance spectroscopy or what is MR spectroscopy. Now, MR spectroscopy is a procedure that involves the measure of brain chemistry. In normal MRI scanning, we uh, acquire anatomical images of the brain tissue, whereas in MR spectroscopy, we acquire uh, a, a graphical representation of the brain chemistry or we try to acquire the concentration of the metabolites present in the human brain. This enables to distinguish between different types of lesions and pathologies and to identify tumor, uh, infection, brain, um, in, uh, infract and uh, different types of, uh, met, uh, different types of uh, brain tumors. Uh, hepatic encephalopathy, Alzheimer's diseases, etc. In normal MR imaging, the total signal from the protons in each voxel is used to make the image. That means, now this is a matrix of the image. This matrix consists of number of rows and columns. Each uh, box represents a voxel. So, in case of a normal MRI scan, we take the signals of all the tissues present in this voxel for imaging. Whereas, in case of MR spectroscopy, we try to suppress the images that we get from water as well as fat. Because we know that the fat and water peaks are very high and therefore, the other metabolites will not be possible to image when we perform a, a spectroscopic imaging. So for this we try to suppress the signals from water as well as the signal from fat tissue. Okay. So in normal MRI imaging we try to obtain uh, anatomical image of the brain whereas in MR spectroscopy we try to obtain the brain chemistry or the concentration of brain metabolites. So these uh, metabolites uh, includes NAA, uh, colon, uh, then um, myoionositol, etc. All these are the metabolites that we try to sequence out in uh, MR spectroscopy. Now, how we perform the suppressing techniques, how we suppress the water signals and how we can suppress the fat signals. This fat signals, it can be eliminated by keeping or by placing the voxel for MR spectroscopy within the brain away from the fat in the bone marrow and scalp. Now, if we take the brain tissue, so this is uh, the brain tissue. So, when we place uh, the voxel, we try to place this voxel away from the scalp region and away from the bone marrow so as to avoid fat signals. So, we will be placing this voxel within the brain tissue. So, when we place a voxel within the brain tissue, the signals from the fat that is present within uh, the scalp and the bone marrow can be eliminated. So this is how we suppress the fat signals. So fat is suppressed. Now we have to suppress water signal. Now how we suppress water signal? So in order to perform water suppression, we use two techniques. The first one is known as chess. Okay. The expansion of chess is chemical shift selective technique or we can perform an IR technique, inversion recovery technique. Okay, so these two techniques are used in order to suppress the signals from fat tissue. Now, these suppression techniques, they are used with two types of pulse sequences, namely STEAM and PREWS. So, these two pulse sequences are used along with the fat suppression technique in order to eliminate the signals from water signals. Now, the expansion of steam is stimulated echo acquisition mode and the expansion of press is point resolved spectroscopy. Okay. 
Now, for uh, spectroscopic imaging, we use two types of gradients that is slice selection gradient and phase encoding gradient. So, only sli uh, slice selection and phase encoding gradients are used for MRS procedure. We do not use frequency encoding gradient in MR spectroscopy. Now, here you can see a slice of the brain tissue. Okay, while performing uh, the part shown in blue color this represent a pathology within the brain tissue now when we perform mr spectroscopy see this is the uh, this is the matrix so this matrix will be placed within the brain tissue so this matrix consists of number of voxels in each of the voxels you can place a cursor and find out the brain metabolite or the metabolite concentration in this region now this represents normal brain tissue this is an abnormal brain tissue you can place a cursor in each of this uh, voxels to uh, identify or to determine the concentration of brain metabolites now when we place the cursor in uh, each of the voxels you will get a graph similar to this okay so based on this graph so each of the peaks they shows different uh, metabolites of the brain tissue now certain metabolites will be increased in certain conditions and some metabolites will be decreased in certain pathologies now based on the concentration we will be able to identify what type of pathology is located or what type of pathology is identified in the brain tissue Now this is a normal MRS spectrum. So here you can see the graph and in each graph you can see different peaks. This represents myoinositol, this represents the peak of colon, this is the GLX complex, this is NAA, this represents the lipids. Now here you can see that the highest peak represents NAA. In case of a normal brain, the highest peak will be that of NAA. NAA means normal acetyl aspirate. Okay. So in, in a normal brain tissue, the peak of NAA will be the highest and it is assigned at 2.02 ppm. So this axis represents the concentration of the metabolites in terms of ppm. Now NAA you can see it is assigned at 2. 0.02 ppm okay so NEA means it is a metabolite that is synthesized in the mitochondria of new neurons and it is transported in the neuronal cytoplasm okay so it is exclusively found in nervous system and it is detected in both gray and white matter now absence or decreased concentration of NAA is a sign of neuronal loss or degradation that means if there is an absence or if the concentration of NAA is decreased it indicates neuronal loss or degradation and neuronal destruction from malignant neoplasm and many white matter diseases result in decreased concentration of NAA. That means if the concentration of normal acetyl aspirate is decreased, it indicates neuronal loss, degradation uh, or certain types of white matter diseases or malignant neoplasms. And increased NAA is noted in Canavan disease. Now what is Canavan disease? Canavan disease is a gene linked disease or it is a neurological disorder in which the brain degenerates into spongy tissue. Okay, So in Canavan disease, uh, the ability of the nerve cell to send and receive messages is damaged. That means if a person has a Canavan disease, his nerve cell will have uh, will not have the ability to send and receive messages. So it is a genetic disorder and in this disorder, the brain tissue degenerates into spongy tissue. So we have discussed about NAA. Decreased NAA indicates uh, neuronal loss or degradation and uh, also it indicates malignant neoplasms. Increased NAA indicates Canavan disease. Now let's move on to the next uh, um, metabolite that is a creatine. Okay, the peak of creatine it is assigned at 3.02 ppm. So here you can see the peak of creatine it is assigned at 3.02 ppm. Okay, uh, 
um, now this peak it represents a combination of molecule containing creatine and phosphocreatine so this indicates a combination of creatine and phosphocreatine now uh, in case of brain tumors the concentration of creatine will be reduced okay so this peak so all this peaks represents the uh, uh, spectrum of a normal brain tissue now if there is decreased in the creatine peak it indicates brain tumors and on the other hand if there is increase in creatine that indicates gliosis okay so decrease in creatine indicates brain tumors okay and increase in creatine indicates gliosis now what is gliosis gliosis indicates uh, the proliferation of glial cells uh, um, into the injured areas of central nervous system that means when the central nervous system will be damaged there will be a change uh, or there will be non specific uh, change to the glial cells okay now what are glial cells glial cells means these are the cells that support the nerve cells now if there is damage to the central nervous system what happens there will be changes uh, happening to the glial cells and this condition is known as gliosis okay now next one let's move on to the next metabolite that is colin okay colin now this peak it is assigned at 3.22 ppm and it represents the sum of colin and colin containing compounds okay now elevated colin levels or elevated levels of colin can be seen in conditions such as neoplasm uh, demyelination inflammation and gliosis so that means the colin level will be elevated in conditions such as uh, uh, in neoplasm in uh, demyelination in inflammation and gliosis now the next component is myo ionositol represented by myo so uh, it is uh, assigned at 3.56 ppm okay and the elevated myo ionositol it occurs with proliferation of glial cells okay uh, as in case of inflammation uh, that means uh, myo ionositol will also be elevated in uh, gliosis in astrocytosis and in alzheimer's disease so in this three conditions uh, the um, concentration of myo ionositol will be increased uh, so uh, myoinositol it will be increased in alzheimer's disease astrocytosis and gliosis okay the next one is alanin okay alanin alanin uh, is an amino acid component and it is centered at around uh, 1.48 ppm okay it is not shown in the graph uh, now increased concentration of alanin may uh, indicate uh, meningiomas okay so there will be increased concentration of alanin in uh, uh, tumors uh, specifically meningiomas so meningioma means it is a primary central nervous system tumor that uh, is visualized in the brain and spinal cord okay the next one is glx complex so it indicates glutamate glutamine complex okay glutamate glutamine complex so it is a complex peak formed by two component that is glutamate and glutamine okay and it is assigned at 2.05 to 2.50 ppm okay now elevated concentration of uh, glx that means elevation in glx will be found in conditions such as hepatic encephalopathy so in case of hepatic encephalopathy the component of glx will be elevated now hepatic encephalopathy it is a nervous system disorder that is caused due to severe liver disease that means when the liver is not working properly uh, there will be toxins that will build up in the blood and these toxins will travel to the brain and it will affect the brain function so this condition is known as hepatic encephalopathy that means it is a damage of or uh, it is a disorder of the nervous system that happens due to severe liver disease so in case of hepatic encephalopathy the component of glx will be increased now the next component is lipid 
so lipids uh, com uh, lipids are not uh, seen in normal uh, brain um, graph but i have shown it here uh so lipids uh, lipid peak it will be seen when there is cellular membrane breakdown or necrosis in case of metastasis or primary malignant tumors so the component of lipid will be seen when there is necrosis uh, uh, due to metastasis or primary malignant tumors and the next uh, peak is lactate so the peak of lactate is not found here because it is not found in the normal brain uh, graph okay uh, so the peak of lactate you cannot see in the normal brain graph but uh, in case of newborn babies uh, for uh, for the first few hours of life you can see the uh, lactate peak only in case of newborn uh, newborn babies just a few hours after birth okay uh, whereas in normal brain you cannot see the peak of lactate now increased lactate signal can occur in inflammation due to macrophage accumulation okay so increased lactate signals are uh, uh, found in inflammatory cases due to macrophage accumulation now based on these metabolites uh, so uh, here you can see different metabolites and we have discussed in which disorders these metabolites will be elevated and in which disorders these metabolites will be decreased now based on the elevation or decrease in these metabolites you will be able to identify what type of pathology is uh, found in the uh, image of the brain tissue now here when you select this uh, damaged brain tissue or when you select the pathology seen in a, when you select the voxel involving the pathology you will get the concentration in a graphical form in this way we can identify the different types of me metabolites we can see their levels whether they are increased or whether they are in decreased and based on that we will be able to diagnose what type of pathology is this now this procedure is known as mr spectroscopy now what are the clinical applications the clinical application uh, applications includes it helps in the diagnosis of brain tumors uh, in the diagnosis of cerebral ischemia and infraction uh, in case of infectious disease in pediatric metabolic disorders in identifying hepatic encephalopathy and in the diagnosis of alzheimer's disease so i hope you learned about mr spectroscopy and this video had been useful for you if you find this video useful please like share and subscribe thanks for watching